What time is it, my creatives? That's right, it's photo hacking time. And it's me, Charlotte Salcedo, your host. And last week, we learned in our beginner Photoshop course. And I actually decided to start with how to install Photoshop brushes because this is the most frequently asked questions for beginners. So with the last three new episodes, we learned how to install a Photoshop brush, we learned how to load legacy brushes, and we learned how to update and install Photoshop Creative Cloud, aka Photoshop CC. And so, as you know, this whole series will be a complete playlist for our beginners, okay? So let me know in the comments below if I should put all the beginner videos in one playlist or break them down in smaller sets. Okay, so this week I'm really excited because we're going to completely finish learning about the brush panel. After this course, you're going to basically master the brush. I mean, you're gonna know everything about the brush. You're gonna be a brush master, I promise you. By the time you're done watching this video, you will have freaking mastered it all. Well, those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. You know, you're one of the cool kids now. And also, I just wanna mention that I'm like totally cool with you stalking me, so feel free to stalk my socials, okay? So you can actually see what I look like in real life. <laughs> and you know, just don't Joe Goldberg me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just a basic bitch, so these are my tutorials and I hope you like them. So let's get into it, yay. Okay guys, so when we talked about legacy brushes in last week's episode, I wanted to also make you aware of converted legacy tool presets. Um, someone brought this to my attention last week and they said I missed those. I didn't miss anything. I just didn't mention them because they are a combination of Photoshop's old brushes from previous versions. It's literally a folder of like every single old brush that Photoshop has ever had. Okay, so since you guys are new and didn't know about old Photoshop brushes because you've never used Photoshop brush brushes before, I didn't see the relevancy of that, but I digress. Now you know, I'll go ahead and show you where they are. They're the same place where you'll find the legacy brushes. So to find the legacy brushes, you just, you know, take your brush tool, okay? And you're going to, okay. I'm gonna get my brush tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete all these brushes so we have a clean palette here. Great. Yes, I wanna delete them all. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your brush tool, this little brush tool right here and your tool Z menu, okay? So, um, and we're gonna talk about this menu here in a second. I really wish that Photoshop would just remove this button. So, cause I'm always forever accidentally clicking on it. All right, so you're gonna click here where your brushes are in the second menu. And you're gonna click on this little wrench and then you'll see converted legacy tool presets. That's the folder of the old brushes. And these are the legacy brushes. So if you click on that, it's just gonna load a folder of all these brushes here that you can play with, they come with Photoshop. They're just all the old ones that have been converted um, into a usable format in the new Photoshop. The best way that I can explain that is I play video games, okay? So let's say that you wanted to play a PS3 game on a PS4. Well, they would remaster that PS3 game so it would work on the PS4. So basically what Photoshop has done is they have remastered the old brushes from all of the old Photoshops so that they can work on the new Photoshop. You're welcome. Speaking of old shit, and this annoying ass button here at the top that has nothing in it here, Let's talk about ABR versus TPL brushes in Photoshop. So, most of you don't know, and I'm just gonna give you the skinny on it. 
ABR versus TPL. You know, back in the day we used to have TPL brushes for more fancy type brushes. Well, because Photoshop has a new upgrade, you know, the TPL panel is just basically obsolete. And if you have a brush like that, it works all the same as ABR. So there's really no ABR versus TPL because TPL used to be the way that we would have to create more advanced brushes. But because Photoshop upgraded their Photoshop, now the panel, the ABRs work exactly the same. They actually have all of these components already in them. So you really don't need a TPL brush, but I'm gonna show you when you open up a TPL brush, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna convert this into uh, an ABR file, like a, a regular brush file? You can, or you can leave it like a TPL, but it's the same because I create brushes all day, so I can just tell you that right now. But let's go ahead and experiment. Okay, so like in the last video where we learned how to open up a Photoshop brush, we simply double click on it. That's the easiest way to open a Photoshop brush. You don't have to go to File, Import, but you don't have to do too many steps, okay? So on my screen here, you see you can uh, load the TPL. When you double click on the TPL, this is what it's gonna say. Import compatible tool presets as brush presets. We recommend importing compatible tool presets as brush presets. Brush presets now contain all the functionality of tool presets, but with addi additional benefits such as stroke previews and the ab ability to organize into folders. So basically what Photoshop is telling you is like, TPL is basically useless and it's better if you just import them as ABR brushes. So when you import them as brushes, you get two additional benefits. You get to preview them and you get to organize them. And you know how us ADHD people, we love organizing things. Yeah. So all you have to do is import them as brushes. If you want to load them as tools, because I don't know why you would do that, but whatever, you can choose. You can pick and choose. But I'm gonna import them as brushes, and they all work the same. As you can see here, they all have the same functionality. These are Kyle's watercolors. You get, like I said in my previous video, you get these brushes absolutely free just for being a Creative Cloud member. When I say CC, I'm literally saying Creative Cloud. So that is what this little menu here is for. And if you load it as a TPL, that's what it's gonna be here for. I really wish that we could just remove this from the panel. I'm pretty sure that there is a way, but I'm so lazy that I just haven't even tried to, so. But what I usually do is I make a wish list of things that I want Photoshop to change, and that is, I'm gonna add that to my list. Remove TPL brush option from the top of the tool panel because it's confusing for my new students, and also it's annoying for me because I keep clicking on it by accident because it's there and it needs to go away. But anyways, all right. So now that we have Kyle's beautiful like watercolor brushes in here, I want to go ahead and I want to start going over the brush, the two brush panels. So now that we know the two brush types, we're going to go over the two brush panels. But before we do that, we're also going to look at the tools. Okay. So if you click here, if you right click here, if you left click, it's going to give you a tool tip if you hadn't turned those off already. which I mean, they're good for new people, but they're a little bit annoying. You know, it, whatever floats your boat. So here you have the brush tool, which is what we're gonna be using mostly. You have the pencil tool. Then you have the color replacement tool and the mixer brush tool. The pencil tool is just utterly fucking useless. Never really used it out of all my 20 years in Photoshop. You might find a use for it, but I don't have a use for it because you can literally make a pencil brush actually in Photoshop, so I don't even know why this tool is still here. 
And is there anybody who uses this? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to see what you use that for. So these other two are gonna be advanced. And so they're not gonna be covered. I am gonna talk about them in the next episode. So now that we're gonna be just working with the brush tool, let's go over that. So the two panels that I'm talking about is that you have the brushes and the brush settings, okay? So to get to these panels, you're gonna to go to Windows, Brush Settings, and Brushes, okay? You just click on those two things and they will pop up in a panel together or you can separate it. So I've separated them so to make this easier and then you could just drag these out so you can see them better okay because we're going to be doing some things here and i want to make this too big because i need to see what i'm doing here but i am going to crop my viewing area a little bit down all right so these are the actual brushes okay these are all your brushes so you can see them when you want to use a brush, you click on a brush and you use it, okay? Don't get confused with brush settings and brushes. These are your brushes you're using. So like if you're doing a digital painting or you're painting something, you're gonna click over here and use your brush. Now, remember when I went over the whole Wacom tablet thing? You can set up short codes where you have you know, your shortcut keys that you can use and a wheel that you can use this for brushes to make this a lot simpler instead of clicking with your mouse, which is sometimes uncomfortable, okay? So, I mean, that's pretty much what this is. You can just select any brush that you want. You can make your brush brushes bigger or smaller, okay? By just dragging this little lever here, okay? It's very simple. In order to rename the brush, okay, you're just gonna right click on it and click rename. You can name this to whatever you want. Sometimes brush designers don't name their brushes at all. So if you need help remembering like what type of brush this is, you can name it something. Or if you're creating your own brush, you can name it. That's how you name brushes. So you can delete the brush by right clicking on it you can create a absolutely new brush group. So what I mean by new brush group. Okay, you see how these are little folders? Okay, so let's say for instance, you downloaded some brushes and then you had some like freaking hot looking crow brushes, you know, some Edgar Allan Poe brushes, I don't know. And then they put some kind of like freaking like bubbles or something that like have nothing to do with like gothic shit. It's like bubbles, sunshine, and happiness. No, we don't want that. We're goths. We don't even we don't even play with the sun, okay? So <laughs> you would want to separate them into separate groups because the goths don't like the sun and the sun don't like the goths. So we're gonna separate those two groups. You know, that's just that's just natural selection, okay? So to do that, you're just gonna click on this and then create new brush from group. Now, of course, these are all watercolor brushes. You wouldn't wanna do that, but that's how you do it. And then like, let's just say we're gonna just call this Goss, the Goss. I'm just being hilarious here because that helps people learn. Okay, so now you have a new brush group called the Goths, okay, that you can drag brushes into that group however you like. Now that's a new group, okay? So you can make all kinds of groups like that. Hmm. So let's say that you wanted to undo that. Well, you just drag it back and then delete the group. So it's that simple, okay? So that's what we learned. We just learned quite a bit of few things in about five, the span of five minutes. Let's recap what we learned. We learned how to rename a brush, delete a brush, create a group from a brush, and then, you know, put it all back the way it was. So that's a lot. So good job. You've learned a lot. That's, that's amazing. So, and then we also learned how to resize our brushes. 
make them bigger and smaller. Now, I do want to mention to you that when you do this, this doesn't make your brush bigger or smaller. The sizing in the brush panel only shows how it visually appears in size. To make your brush bigger or smaller, you're going to use the left and right bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. Or by simply going into the brush settings and changing the size, okay? To know how large a brush size is, you're going to look in the panel there. You see the number 200, 280, 70, 70. That depicts the actual size of the brush, how large the brush actually is in dimensions and pixels, okay? The higher in pixel in size is the higher quality of brush that you will receive. So a 200 um, brush is small, but it may work for what your project is working for. But if you're wanting to make larger project files, then you'll want a larger brush size and uh, probably around the range of 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. Another thing is, in some cases, these watercolor brushes, they're nice, small, but if you like increase the size, really large look how slow it gets and it's like a little bit pixelated you know so that's my key tip to you these are the size of the brushes so you know that you're not going to be able to create really large brush strokes from these these are going to be pretty small so i just wanted to mention that to you so what does this button do well let's click on it it's also to create a group so that's just another way you can create a group you can right click on and create a new group or you can click here at the bottom and create a group, a new group. So what does this plus button do? If you click on it, it's going to uh, create a new brush, okay? And what kind of brush is it gonna create? It's just gonna create a duplicate brush with the color settings, okay? Because we haven't changed any of the settings over here, it's just, it's just trying to be smart and just guess what we want to do. So that's pretty cool, but I think that's kind of useless in my opinion. I'm like, why would you want to just create a new brush from another brush? That's just dumb. You know, when you could just change the color, but that's just my opinion. And then here is to delete a brush. So basically, I'm just going to delete this brush because it's annoying me because it's like a duplicate. All right, so yeah, so you can, anything that you can do on the bottom, you can right click and do, and I prefer to right click because I just, these little buttons on the bottom, I mean, they're just, they're just there for people who just are not aware that you can right click on stuff, I guess. I don't know, Photoshop, just let me know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and so that's basically the gist of the brushes panel, and then you have this little this little um, icon at the top, it looks like little four bars and you click on it. It's basically reiterating everything that you could do by right clicking, except that it allows you to change the way the brushes visually appear in the menu. And that is all that it changes really. This makes it easier to look at a lot of brushes at once. Now you can see the name of the brush. So this is easier for quicker access and I know that some people struggled with, I don't know if you're watching this, if you ever had to deal with TPL brushes, where some of the names of the files were cut off. One of the reasons why the new brush menu is better than the old TPL way of doing things, the old brush system, is that if you see Kyle's name here, Kyle's Real Watercolor, and then 300 Big Softly, well with the TPL brushes, the only thing that you would see is Kyle's Real Watercolor. You couldn't actually see the name of the brush. So with this new brush setting, it makes it a lot easier to see the name of the brushes, the size of the brush, and to even resize the brush. So this new brush menu makes it really easy to work with brushes in Photoshop. And I think that you're really going to enjoy the new way of doing things in Photoshop. And so moving down, you can see here, you can append the default brushes and basically what that means is just putting everything back to the way it was like with the default brushes from Photoshop you can import brushes and you can exp 
export selected brushes. So let's say you wanted to create a new brush preset. You would click on the brush and then you can press the shift key. So I'm holding down the shift key and whatever key the shift key is on the Mac, that's what you would use. And then you would just select the brushes that you want. And then you could go back up here and then export the selected brushes and then go to the desktop and then name it something. My brush, my watercolor brush, watercolor, watercolor brush. Whoops, if I can only spell, if I only had a brain. Okay, and then you would save it. And then if you go on your desktop, there's a brush there. Yes, I just wrote you're worthless to myself. Okay, so there it is. Watercolor, ABR, and all the brushes that we just created are on the desktop. Okay, great. So you learned how to create your own brush from other brushes. And then, of course, you see here the same thing, convert legacy tool presets, legacy brush. And then now you have my watercolor brushes in here, okay? That is what we just created and it's gonna be in here until it's not, until we delete it. <laughs> so uh, now that we have gone over the complete brush panel, we're done here, okay? So you have just completed the full course on learning the entire brush panel. So in the next video, we're gonna go over the brush settings and how to actually create your own brush. We're gonna go through all of these different uh, elements, the brush shape, the shape dynamics, we'd explain all of this, how to, ex how to export your brush and create your own brushes from scratch. And then the video after that, we are going to get into organizing your brushes and the best way to store your brushes. And then we will completely be done with brushes. We'll be moving on to advanced brushes like the mixer brush and the actual uh, other tools that were in the brush panel and that is it so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like this video please like and hit the subscribe button and uh, you guys always uh, have a great day keep creating bye